In the previous videos, I talked about how to buy your first dedicated Astro camera, as well as a set of filters to go along with it. In today's video though, I want to focus on the recommended accessories you'll need, that way everything actually works properly. Let's start off here on ZWO, and we'll just go right down the list. The first thing that I bought was a 12 volt power adapter, because for whatever reason, my camera here, the ASI 1600, did not come with the 12 volt power adapter to power the fan in the cooling system. You would think if you're buying a camera, it would come with all the cables you need, but for whatever reason it did not. So I'm assuming it's the same way across the board with all the ZWO cameras, and you'll have to buy the power cable as well. So the ZWO option costs about $30. It's not necessarily that cheap. You can find much more affordable options on Amazon, but for me, I wanted to make sure that the plug actually fit and it was the right uh, power and all that. So I just stuck with the official ZWO one. If you know what you're doing though, like I said, you can go on Amazon and save some money if you wanna go that route. But once you get your power cable, obviously you're gonna need a way to plug it in. So I use a Jackery 240 watt hour battery and you can see it's got two USB ports, the little car port there and your standard wall. And this does a good job. I've been using it for quite a while now but it's also not cheap. So there's a lot of other options out there like the Celestron power tank. A lot of people use something like this, but if you just Google this, uh, like I've always recommended going over to Cloudy Nights, a lot of the time what they recommend is just like buying a little marine battery and doing it yourself because these are all kind of like the do-it-yourself type guys. For me though, I'm not that technical and I don't like having to do any of that, so I would just buy a battery. Some of the more really advanced guys, they're going with like this Pegasus Astro Power Box. These are really high end and they can do a lot, but for what we're doing, it's kind of over the top and we don't really need all that. But you can see there's a lot of different options. Just make sure that it's gonna take the right plug uh, for what we're doing. So that's the power. Like I said, I'm using Jackery, but you can definitely save your money and get something else or do be a little bit more do it yourself. Whatever route you wanna go down, uh, moving on though from the power, let's go back to our accessories page. The next thing we'll talk about are the different lens adapters or telescope adapters that you might want to buy. And I want to be clear here, when you get your camera, it's going to come with a lot of these little adapters inside the box. However, it won't come with one to connect to a Canon or an Icon lens. So if you want to use this with some of your lenses, you're going to need to get one of these different adapters to connect the camera to your lens. Since I have Nikon lenses, I decided to get this adapter here because it's gonna work with my electronic filter wheel. And if you got an electronic filter wheel, which I recommend, you'd wanna consider something similar. Now, as you read through here, you'll notice that they specify that some lenses might need to be forced open. If we take a look at my lens here, you can see that there's like a little mechanical switch on the back. As I move that up and down, it actually controls the aperture inside of my lens. And you'll find this on a lot of different lenses out there. The problem is by default, the lens is closed down and we're not gonna get a lot of light. So what they recommend here on ZWO is using like an orthodontic rubber band, which is, you know, if you had braces, one of those little rubber bands just to keep it, the me mechanical switch wide open and to keep that aperture open in the lens. Some of the nicer newer lenses though, they're all electronically controlled. What that means is that by default, the lens should be wide open and you don't even have to worry about this. So before you buy any kind of, of adapters, make sure you go and look at your lenses just so you'll kind of have an idea of how much of a hassle this is gonna be. And frankly, I'd almost recommend holding off on buying any specific Nikon or Canon adapters until we get to the back focus video because that's a whole nother thing where you have to get everything properly spaced to actually even have a focused image. And uh, we're not quite there yet. So my recommendation would be Keep an eye on these different adapters, kind of research it, see what you think you'll need. They make Nikon adapters. They've got the EOS Canon adapters. I'm not sure if they make Sony or not, but um, point being, I wouldn't actually buy any adapters until we get to that point in the course because I don't want you to waste your money and buy something that you don't actually need or turns out it's the wrong part. But to be clear, I did buy this adapter and we're gonna see how that works in an upcoming video. Moving on from the adapters, arguably the most important accessory you're gonna need 
is the ASIR Pro. This is something that we're going to use throughout the rest of the videos because this is essentially our the brains of the operation. It's going to replace a laptop. And the way this works is we plug in our dedicated astro camera in here, we plug in our guide scope, or rather the auto guider, and everything else. And then once everything's been plugged in here, we can do our polar alignment, we can do our guiding, we can even take our images all from a smartphone app. And if you do have a go-to mount, you know, one of the higher-end telescope mounts, you can actually do all that functionality right here in the app as well. So this is a great little device that's gonna let really streamline your night and allow you to do everything from a smartphone rather than having to rely on a laptop. To be clear though, there's no problem with using a laptop if you wanna go that route. Maybe you already have an older laptop just lying around the house. That's gonna work just fine. You might wanna start off with that first and then once you kinda of get the hang of things, maybe then you can upgrade to the ASIR Pro. But for me, I already have an ASIR Pro and that's what we're gonna be focusing on throughout the course. The cool thing is you can even use it with a Canon or a Nikon camera and control some of that functionality. And if you wanna learn more about how this all works, I've already got a video on the older version of the ASIR on my YouTube page, so go over and check that out. But one important thing here is that the ASIR Pro by itself costs $300. It's not exactly cheap, but if you figure, you know, a laptop's gonna cost you that much anyway if you, want, if you need to buy another one. But you'll notice there's two other options here. You can get with the ASI120 Mini or the 30 millimeter F4. So let's look at these both a little bit more closely. The 120 Mini here, this is gonna be your auto guider. It's what I personally use, and I really haven't had any issues with it over the past year. This little thing here is just gonna slide into what's called the guide scope. It's gonna go right in the back here, and you're gonna attach this to your telescope or somewhere on your mount or your camera, and that's gonna allow you to do guiding now with the ASIR Pro. And again, if you wanna learn more, check out my video here on YouTube already. We'll also cover this in a future video in the course. But the guide scope and the mini here are gonna work perfectly together, and it's gonna allow you to do much more accurate tracking with a Sky Guider Pro or Star Adventure, or even a big telescope mount. But depending on how big of a lens or telescope you're using, you might actually wanna get something a little bit more advanced in terms of the guide scope. So if you're just getting into this, this combo here is gonna work great, especially if you're shooting 600 millimeters or less. If you're gonna be shooting like 1,000, 2,000 millimeters, which I'm not really gonna talk about in this course because that's way over what I wanna do, uh, then you might wanna get a bigger guide scope. But for just a nice little portable setup, these two work great. And the best part is you can get them bundled with the ASAR Pro. And you might save some money. I'm honestly not sure what it all comes out to, but worth checking out there. And that's about all I want to talk about in today's video on accessories. We covered powering your camera's cooling system. And then we talked about how to plug that into something and keep everything powered. Again, you, I'd recommend you just checking out Cloudy Nights or this article from Astro Backyard. There's a lot of information out there. Just find what's going to work best for your own setup. I'm personally using a Jackery 240 watt hour battery, and uh, that works fine. Then we talked about the different adapters you might want to get depending on your camera. But like I said, you might want to hold off on that until I can actually show you things more in depth. And really, the big thing that you need is just the power cable and the battery. Once you have those two, you can at least start taking your images. And uh, the other thing to consider though is the ASIR Pro. This will replace your laptop. And if you get it with the guide scope and the auto guider, it'll make your tracker much more accurate. If you don't wanna go this route though, just use your laptop that you might already have. You'll plug in your dedicated astro camera into that. And that's how you'll take your photos and do your guiding and everything. So we got a lot more to talk about in the following videos, but at least now you know just some of the very basic accessories you'll need to actually make everything work.